Hi, my name's Rob and I work in the metal oxide research department. Hi, I'm Alice and I work in the applications department. We both work for Croda in the sun care part of the business. Croda is an international company that manufactures ingredients for a range of everyday products. On this Croda site in Cheshire, we develop products for the personal care industry, including hair care and sun care products. Light from the sun can cause skin damage, particularly the UV region of the electromagnetic spectrum. UV radiation can be divided into two main regions. These are UVA and UVB radiation. UVB is responsible for the burning and blistering of the skin in the upper layers of the skin known as the epidermis. The UVA penetrates further into the deeper layers of the skin known as the dermis. This has been linked to premature aging and damage to the skin's elastic tissues. Although skin contains pigments which offer some protection, further protection is required to prevent the damaging effects of the sun's light. This protection is offered through the use of sun creams that contain active ingredients that offer protection for both UVB and UVA radiation. Each sun care product contains a range of UV filters. These filters can be classed as organic or chemical filters and inorganic filters. Each UV filter acts in three main ways. This is to reflect, to scatter and to absorb UV radiation. Here at Croda, we specialise in inorganic UV filters, as these are very photostable, offering long-lasting protection to the end user. Individual UV filters provide protection over different wavelengths of ultraviolet radiation. By selecting different particle sizes and shapes of inorganic filters, such as titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, and using organic filters, we can create a combination offering broad spectrum protection. So once we've made the dispersions, we need to put them into a sun cream so that we can demonstrate them to our customers and so that we can do some further testing. Sun creams are emulsions. We have two types of emulsion, water in oil or oil in water. Water in oil is water droplets dispersed in a continuous oil phase and oil in water is oil droplets dispersed in a continuous water phase. Uh, water in oil tends to be more efficient on the skin and is more water resistant. Uh, but can have a, a heavier skin feel. Um, oil in water is generally more common, but it does have a, generally a lower water resistance. You get sun creams with different SPFs on them, different sun protection factors. Um, so you might get SPF 15 or maybe SPF 50. Uh, to increase the SPF, you either increase the concentration of your UV filters but there's other ways as well you can help improve the efficiency of the formulation. So using a different emulsion type, water in oil can be more ef efficient than oil and water. Or by adding SPF boosters, film formers, you can make the, the formulation more efficient. To put the SPF on the label of a pack, you have to measure it in vivo. So that means measuring it on people uh, to see how much protection is offered from burning. Um, but we can do screening before we get to that stage by testing in vitro. So this means we test on plastic plates that have been roughened to mimic the skin's surface. And then we use um, an instrument to see how much light passes through the film. And we repeat this until we've taken nine scans on one plate, and then we'd repeat and do another two plates before we get our result. So we have our absorbance curve of the lotion that we've tested and we can see we've got good UVB coverage, so from the 290 to 320 nanometers. We've also got good UVA coverage, so 320 to 400 nanometers. And this is giving us an SPF of 22, so SPF 20 on the pack. As well as testing the SPF, the sun protection factor, we also need to measure the UVA protection factor to find out how much the lotion is protecting us from UVA. So we use a similar method to testing the SPF. So we spread the lotion on a plate, we take an initial reading in the SPF machine, and then we need to do an irradiation step. So we put the sample into the solar simulator, and this irradiates the sample with a UV bulb um, to mimic the sun. So this takes into account any degradation of the UVA filters.
After completing a chemistry degree at York University, I studied physical chemistry for both a PhD and also through a postdoc studies. After my postdoc study, I decided that I wanted to apply my physical chemistry knowledge to real life inventions and applications. I joined Crowder to put my knowledge to work and the metal oxide development. I did a placement year in industry as part of my degree, which meant that I knew I wanted to work for a company such as Crowder. So after my degree, I applied for the graduate scheme. At Crodo, I did three different technical placements and then I ended up in the SunCat lab.